Welcome folks to Jacob's Basement Dungeon where he's got his own home theater set up. And so enjoy the new format. And this Sunday morning we will have video church as usual at which time I'll tell you more details about Sunday night. Drive-in church on Sunday night. And uh, we will talk about that on Sunday morning's video. For now, let me tell you about a family in lockdown. Lockdown. 40 days, 40 nights in the ark. Noah's family was confined in a boat. There were no windows, no balconies, no terraces, no internet, no phone, no TV. That means no Netflix, no YouTube, no Facebook and toilet paper would not be invented for another 4,000 years. They only heard the rain. They spent their time praying, loving each other, caring for the animals. God the Father took care of them as Noah was a man of faith and obeyed his word. Now remember, even though it feels like there is out there, outside of your house right now, an ocean of viruses, and your present life, like mine, seems like a most stormy ride. Our God is in full control. He's watching over us. Don't be afraid. Be faithful to Him. Wait patiently for Him. The rain will stop one day. A rainbow will shine and all will be well again. Noah was a man held responsible for his household. He recognized his importance for the sake of the world, something we too need to get a grip on because people out there are afraid. They're worrying. They're thinking day and night, especially in bed at night awake. They're praying. They're searching for truth. They're searching for the truth, and we have that truth. They've been asleep, and now you'll notice they're waking up. They're thinking about spiritual things and yet they're lost. They are drowning. And we have a big boat. That is Jesus Christ, our Ark of Salvation. Imagine with me the building of the Ark, what it looked like, and how the world must have felt about what Noah was preaching. Imagine with me the animals entering, and finally the sky beginning to fall. Think about what it had to be like inside. Just think about that, what it was like inside. Think about what it would have been like outside. What a storm it was that brewed all around them. But God was with them all the way, and he must have dispatched a lot of angels to hold it all together as well, uh, because he had to keep calm that circus that it must have been inside. Eventually, the storm would calm, but the waters would remain for many days and many nights. Can you get a sense with me of what it felt like to finally come to rest on land and eventually step out onto the ground? What a world it was as God gave a fresh start and a second chance to begin again. And though he's promised to never destroy this sinful earth again by a flood, he has promised that it will be destroyed again by fire the next time. What we see going on around us now is just signs of the end, the end to come. Well, we need to see that we have a lot in common with Noah in these stormy days in which we live. We need to learn how to build an ark of safety for our family. You know, I think back to when we had my son, our firstborn. We were so excited after losing our first child several years later to know Jacob was on the way, and so we remodeled our nursery in a Noah's Ark theme. We had no idea that within a couple years our children would, would keep coming two by two, male and female. Well, on the next slide we have our text from Hebrews 11 and verse uh, number 7, which says, By faith, Noah, being warned of God, of things not seen as yet, moved with fear, prepared an ark to the saving of his house. Let me tell you a little story about a woman who was 99 years old. She lay on her deathbed with her husband at her side. 
Her breaths were drawing short, but suddenly she gained strength and leaned up and she said, My, it is dark. Her husband said, Yes, Janet, it is dark. She said, Is it night? He said, Oh, yes, tis midnight. Then she said this, Are all the children in? Her mind was taking her back to their early years of marriage when they had little kids and revealed her concern that all her children were in for the night. You know, that story reminds me of the days in which we live because it is dark. It's midnight. The clock's about to strike for the final time. Are all the children in? Noah preached and preached the truth, trying to get all the children to come into the ark. And only a very few would enter in. The people of Noah's day were in trouble. And we are in trouble. But God has a message of hope that provides us with his wisdom about what to do in these perilous times in which we find ourselves. God saw how corrupt the earth had become. For all the people on earth had corrupted their ways. So God said to Noah, I'm going to put an end to all people, for the earth is filled with violence because of them. I'm surely going to destroy both them and the earth. Noah lived in a time remarkably similar to our time. People in Noah's day were hardened toward spiritual matters, and that would be a fair assessment of our culture today. The Bible says right before the second coming of the Lord Jesus and the end of the world, things will be like they were in the days of Noah. And so get ready, friend. He is coming. There'll be no time to say, wait, I want to start doing the things that I should have been doing as a Christian. Wait, I want to witness to someone. Wait, I want to give up a habit. Wait, I owe the Lord some back tithes. <laughs> There'll be no chance for that. So we need to get ready. Now, before this day is over, we could all be stepping into eternity. Think about that. I remind you again, folks, we are closer to the return of Jesus Christ at this moment than any humans who have ever lived. How exciting. Well, one of the great prophecies indicating the return of Jesus is that it would be as in the days of Noah. A similarity between Noah's day and our day, and we see that. Matthew 24, 37 says, As it was in the days of Noah, so it will be <clears throat> at the coming of the Son of Man. The ancient world, like ours, was filled with heartache and turmoil, but there was an exception to the norm. His name was Noah. When everyone else was swimming downstream into an abyss of sin, Noah was going against the flow, headed upstream in large part because of his godly heritage. Did you know Noah's family included such spiritual giants as Enoch, uh, a man who walked with God, and his great-grandfather, uh, and Methuselah, which was his grandfather. Remember, Methuselah lived 969 years, the longest of anyone who'd ever lived, because of God's blessing upon him. <clears throat> Noah's father, named Lamech, lived 777 years. There's God's perfect number. The Antichrist is 666. Lamech lived 777. Now, Methuselah, his name literally means this. His name means, his death shall bring. Enoch, Methuselah's father, had a vision that as long as his son, Methuselah, uh, uh, was alive, the flood that would destroy the world would not come. So in effect, Methuselah's death would bring the flood. The year Methuselah died was indeed the year that the flood came. God predicted it right down to the uh, very moment. Well, you know, in America's universities and other institutions of higher learning, there's an ongoing argument. The argument states that your environment dictates your character. Well, it's in this Noah story that we learn that it's actually godly heritage that influences your character. Noah's life was like a beautiful rose blossoming in the desert of his time. In the midst of ungodliness, Noah was a God-fearing man, steadily raising his family on a daily diet of faith and obedience. This reminds us now that there is no substitute for a godly heritage. It's one of the greatest gifts you can receive or pass on to your children. And so folks, do everything within your power to pass on your faith, to raise your kids and grandkids in a way that honors Christ. Children, know this, kids. 
your parents and your grandparents aren't just your history. They are your heritage. Appreciate them. <clears throat> Proverbs 22.1 says, A good name is rather to be chosen than great riches. Well, here in the room are my kids. Alyssa is filming me. Jacob is doing PowerPoint as usual. On Jacob's wall hangs a plaque that used to hang on my wall that was given to me by his grandfather, my dad, Pastor James Shirley. And that plaque says of our name, Shirley, it says, you got it from your father. It was all he had to give. So it's yours to use and cherish for as long as you may live. If you lose the watch he gave you, it can always be replaced, but a black mark on your name, son, can never be erased. It was clean the day you took it, and a worthy name to bear. When he got it from his father, there was no dishonor there. So be sure you guard it wisely. After all is said and done, you'll be glad the name is spotless when you give it to your son. We're talking now about a godly heritage, and there's three ways to pass on a godly heritage. Here's the first way to pass on a godly heritage is get saved. To just get saved. You have to receive the heritage first by getting saved. The Bible says Noah found grace in the eyes of the Lord. That's the, days when, the day when he got saved. He was saved by grace just like you and I are. Uh, Genesis 7-4 says there were seven days that people could be saved. All of those days ended in Y. Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, just like today. You can get saved any day until suddenly the door slams shut and the last sinner walks the aisle. If you're not sure if you've been saved, make sure. After you get saved, get right. Get right. This means uh, getting right with God. This might mean getting rid of some things. This might mean getting right with a family member. For some, it might mean getting married and righting a situation. Get saved. Get right. Number three, get into church. I mean really into church. People say they love Jesus. Well, if you love Jesus, you should love what He loves. And Christ loved the church and gave Himself for it. Have you noticed that God was able to pull off His Noah plan with just Noah, just one man and his family, that gives me hope. Because even if I feel my impact is insignificant, God can still use my impact to accomplish His wonders. Even in these limited days, I'm finding that He can use me and my family in some great ways if we will let Him. And so remember with me, folks, this important truth. God may want to use your family in an unusual way right now. God wants to use your family as an instrument of His grace through which He can unleash His creative plans for those around you. The story of Noah is an excellent illustration of this. And so we must respond like Noah, respond with faith and obedience. In Hebrews 11:7, our main text, it says that by faith Noah did these things. Noah's faith saved him. That's number one. Number one, Noah's faith saved him. The same way that faith can save a person today. You can protect your family in a lot of different ways. You might have a gun. You might have karate lessons. You might have a plan to protect your family with your freezers packed full of food. But the best way that you can protect them is by faith. Faith saves. And who does it save? Acts 16.31 says, They said, Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, that's when you get saved, and thou shalt be saved, and thy house. Yeah, faith that saves the house, that's what we're looking for. Uh, just a little bit earlier in that same chapter, a woman named Lydia had her whole house get saved. Um, so parents, let me challenge you to take the lead and claim your kids for the kingdom. Lead your kids to church. Lead your kids in prayer. Lead them to know the Lord. By faith, Noah, this verse says. Everything Noah did in preparation for the threatened deluge and storm was done in virtue of simple faith, belief of what God had said he had given his word. Now remember, God said there's going to be rain. 
there's going to be a flood. And yet, in those days, it had never rained. They had all that they needed from the morning dew and the rivers. They're 500 miles from water, and people's asking, what's a boat? What's rain? A giant canopy in the heavens and regular provision from the ground provided all the moisture that their world needed. It was not because he could show from the weather reports that things were heading to a catastrophe. Uh, uh, there would be many excuses why it could not work. It wasn't because such an event had happened before. No, it was simply because God had warned him of something to come and he put his trust in God's warnings. Let me tell you the Noah story retold in a different way with today's typical excuses included. If Noah lived today, here's how it might have gone. The Lord spake unto Noah and said, I'm going to make it rain and cover the whole earth with water until all is destroyed. But I want you, Noah, to save the righteous people and two of every kind of, of the animals. Therefore, I'm commanding you to build the ark. And in a flash of lightning, God delivered the specifications. Fearful and trembling, Noah took the plans and agreed to build the ark. Remember, said the Lord, you must complete the ark and bring everything aboard in time. Years later, into the project. The Lord saw Noah sitting in his front yard weeping. Noah, he shouted, where is the ark? Noah said, Lord, please forgive me. I did my best, but there was such big problems. First, I had to get a permit for construction and your plans didn't comply with the codes. Lord, forgive me. I had to hire an engineering firm and redraw the plans. Then I got into a fight with OSHA. Not the ocean, OSHA over whether or not the ark needed a fire sprinkler system and flotation devices. I'm still trying to imagine how the elephants are going to fit inside, Lord. How are those elephants going to fit inside? Then my neighbor objected, claiming I was violating zoning ordinances by building the ark in my front yard, so I had to get a variance from the city planning commission. I had problems getting enough wood for the ark because there was a ban on cutting trees to protect the spotted owl. Oh Lord, I had this terrible dream of what would happen once the woodpeckers came aboard anyway. I think we have a woodpecker picture, don't we? Let's go ahead one more. There's one with the weather. And how are we going to get those elephants inside? One more, Jacob. What happens when the woodpeckers uh, come aboard, uh, he said. Well, when I started rounding up the other animals, I got sued by PETA, Noah said. They objected to me only taking two of each kind aboard. And just when I got their suit dismissed, the EPA notified me that I could not complete the ark without filing an environmental impact statement on your proposed flood, Lord. They said that much water could promote mold growth. The Lord said, this is why I'm destroying the earth. <laughs> Then the Army Corps of Engineers demanded a map of the proposed new floodplain. Lord, I sent them a globe. Right now I'm trying to resolve a complaint filed with the Equal Employment Opportunity Commission that I'm practicing, they say that I'm practicing discrimination by not taking godless, unbelieving people aboard. The IRS has seized all my assets, claiming I'm building the ark in preparation to flee the country to avoid paying my taxes. And I just got a notice from the state that I owe some kind of user tax and that I failed to register the ark as a recreational watercraft. Oh, finally, Lord, the ACLU got the courts to issue an injunction against further construction of the ark, saying that since God's flooding the earth, it's a religious event and unconstitutional. I really don't think I can finish for another few years, Noah wailed. And then the sky began to clear, the sun began to shine, and the seas began to calm, and a rainbow arched across the sky. Noah looked up hopefully. Lord, does this mean that you're not going to destroy the earth? No, said the Lord sadly. Your government already has. Well, you know, our government may let us down in a whole lot of ways, and you may think they're letting us down even now. But the real Noah operated on faith. He did what he was told. It went by the book, and that's why it worked. You know, the experts, the quote-unquote experts, are the ones that built the Titanic. But a simple volunteer following God's word, Noah built the ark. 
Noah had an ear for God, and spiritual hearing comes from spiritual listening. The Bible is not a spiritual dessert to just be eaten every now and then, or when you've got a craving. The Bible is to be our daily bread. Faith cometh by hearing. If you want to have the faith that can protect your children, you have to be a man, a woman of the word. So that's all under no, number one, that Noah's faith saved him. Number two, Noah's fear moved him. You know, fear is our friend. Fear can help us to stay alive. Fear of fire, for instance, is a good thing. It'll put smoke detectors in your house, and you'll be diligent about how you use candles and lanterns and open flames. The Bible says, By faith Noah, being warned of God of things not seen as yet, things not seen as yet. That makes me think of hell. Something we've not seen as yet. But our fear can, can move us. Noah moved with fear, prepared an ark. If Noah had no fear of God, he would not have been motivated to build the ark in the first place. So year by year, Noah built the ark for the saving of his family. Nothing more important than taking care of our homes. Now here's the process. Number one, Noah walked with God. Number two, Noah's walk with God was a witness to his family. And so number three, Noah's family was one to the Lord. Can fear protect your family? Noah's fear protected his family. And in the day in which we live, folks, we need spiritual dikes built that can withstand the greatest storms of all time, like the storms of life in eternity. Noah's faith saved him. Noah's fear moved him. And number three, Noah's family followed him. That's number three. Noah's family followed him and all of creation. Noah's stock was riding high while the rest of the world was in liquidation. There's no better thrill than, than to have the fellowship of your family. Third John verse 4 says, I have no greater joy than to hear that my children walk in truth. You know, some family's not going to follow. Everybody's got their own free will. Some don't do what they were told. Uh, an example, how about Noah's son's wives' families? They didn't get on the ark. Just Noah and his wife, his sons and their wives. What about um, the families of his son's wives, those in-laws? Well, what a thrill when those who will follow decide to get on board. So parents, I hope that you are trusting the God uh, of Noah. He's our God today. Have you looked into the eyes of the Lord and found His grace like Noah did? Are you constructing your house by God's design plans? As Janet said, 99 years old to her husband, are all the children in? Let's make sure of that. And remember, we've got drive-in church this Sunday night. We'll give you more details uh, about it. Show them that slide one more time, Jacob. We'll give you more details during the Sunday morning regular video. So we'll have video church on Sunday morning, uh, April the 5th. We're a week away from Easter. We want to have drive-in church on Easter Sunday morning. And so we're going to practice this once with a message leading up to Easter this Sunday night. Again, at 6 p.m. we'll give you all the details. Uh, for now, I want you to go to the escape room on the church website, firstbaptistnewlondon.com. And uh, there's new music there, uh, several more shorter episodes, and some more full-blown sermons all there waiting for you. Thanks for joining us today, and God bless you.